He's Tony Reale, former stat boy. Once a stat boy, always a stat boy. But he hosts the ESPN sports debate and discussion show called Around the Horn. <laughs> is that what that is? I see somebody should have told me somebody, that 14 years ago. It's, it's the debate and discussion show okay. Monday through Friday at 5 Eastern. How long have you been hosting? Yeah, February of 04 was when I took over Around the Horn, when I, when I filled in for Around the Horn. So that was, uh, that's going on. This is our 13th, 14th season of that. How old were you? 25 at that time, I think. Maybe just turned 26 recently. Pretty turned, big. Pretty, pretty big it was, it was It was enormous. It was, I can tell you from the suit I wore that day, which was <laughs> the only suit I had, it was drenched. Yeah. With sweat, with 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 pangs of fear. I mean, I think that was a big day. That was the day after the Super Bowl. I just teased it, you know. It was the, it was the day after the Patriots Panthers Super Bowl. It was the day after Janet Jackson's boob was introduced to the entire world. And that's the show I fill in as. Hey, how we do? I'm a 26 year old who's going to talk about okay, sports. Okay, Janet Jackson's breast was where in the in the show that day? Um, I'm sure we led with the game and then did Janet Jackson's breast. So I'll say that was A2. <laughs> um, <laughs> A2 for probably about five minutes. And here I am. I mean, that was the first breast I've ever seen. So, <laughs> so for me to be able to process all that, uh, it was it was a big show and that was my first one. So it's a memorable one and... Saying that, uh, I don't remember any second of it because I was so scared. Imagine if Janet Jackson, Justin Timberlake happened now with yeah. social media. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, I mean, it was a big deal then. The yeah. FCC was looking into it for months. I mean, this, at some point we fatigued it. We were like, all right, we got it. You know, it's a boob. I, that was what Mike Wilbon said on PTI the next day. Our children. What are you going to tell your child? I don't even think Matthew was born at that point, so we, he didn't have he didn't have Lil Bon. What are you going to tell your children if if there's a boob on national TV? Son, that is a boob. Let's watch the game. You know, I mean, that's that's. I remember Wilbon saying that. But but, sure, especially in today's uh, today's climate, I think as we like to say. What, Paul? Dan, weren't your kids at that game? Yes, they were. Are they scarred for life? They're scarred, but not because. <laughs> no, no. My son was fascinated by it. Yeah. Um, I don't know how old he was. So he was probably 12. He was probably 13. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just the fact that it happened. Yeah. And then he wanted to ask if somebody was going to get in trouble. Well, he was, yeah. I mean, that was it. That did anybody get in trouble? I don't think so. Right? Nobody really got in trouble. And, and Janet Jackson took the brunt of that, which is just a very odd thing to think back 15 years. Did, Someone else. Did CBS get, was it a CBS Super Bowl? I, I think CBS got fined something like 125 grand or something for that. I was, yeah, that, that, I remember that too. I remember being six figures for a broadcast that had a hundred million people watching. Did you yeah. ever doubt, though, if you could do around the horn? Like, oh, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I had doubt. I mean, I was a uh, sidekick on the best show on the network. Yeah, and that's ten seconds of airtime a day. It's not like I was doing. I mean, heavy lifting. I, I was doing ten seconds of airtime a day, and I was just enjoying being around Tony and Mike, which for me was, you know, that's something that was enjoyable and and. What we were doing on air, we were doing off air for eight hours before we did the show. Um, How did you get that job as Stat Boy? I wanted to be you. I wanted to be uh, Mike Breen, I think, even a little bit before that. Oh, you Somebody wanted to do play-by-play. Play. Yeah. And I went to Fordham University, which, growing up in this area, the guy who called the Yankees, the guy who called the Knicks, the guy who called the Giants, the guy who called the Nets all went to Fordham. Simple choice. I wasn't going anywhere else. And my, my broadcast partner at Fordham at the time was, was very, very good. The first time I heard him, I was like, okay, I guess I'm doing something else. It was Spiro Ditas, who's now oh, yeah. calling the March Madness games, calling CBS games. So that, that's who I'm rolling with <laughs> as he's doing back around the rim the other way. We're going left to right on the radio dial. And I'm just like doing stand-up material in the middle of a bit. I mean, I, was, I had a little bit too much personality, for lack of a better word, in the middle of a radio call. That's not working, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm crowd work. I'm, I'm doing crowd work in the middle of a, I mean, there's no crowd. So, so I think in the end, and you know who our, um, our play-by-play -play mentor was? Marty Glickman. Oh, legendary. So I'm at Fordham. I've got guys out the wazoo who are doing national and, and local big, big games. I've got Marty Glickman telling me, Anthony, with that voice, you're never going to be a play-by-play -play man. Because <laughs> mom's from Brooklyn. Dad's from Manhattan and Staten Island. Born in Staten Island, raised in Jersey. That is the armpit of accents. <laughs> I mean, that was as bad as you get. 
And to fast forward, I mean, ESPN, I, I worked with a voice coach for a little while, so you hear what you're hearing. Now. What comes out, though? There's certain words. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, what was it for me? Because uh, I mean, my think wife will go, anything oh, that, God. Yeah, yeah. I, I think anything that ends in ER is a real troublesome thing for me, like a, a water or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I think I've lost it. I mean, I lived in D.C. for a while, too. Um, but I, I get I get a position opening with um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire spinoff on sports, which is the two-minute drill hosted by Kenny Maine. All right? So that's my entree into, uh, into ESPN. I wrote, I researched for the first season and wrote trivia questions for a living. How great a job is that? A dream job number two, actually, because at Fordham, I was covering the Yankees in 1998, 1999, and 2000. So I saw three World Series covering the Yankees as a student reporter for a public radio station that was professional, you know? So I, I had those two experiences early on, and there's no turning back when you have that. But writing trivia questions for Kenny Main show, which is a really cool experience because you guys ever see Quiz Show, the movie? Yeah. It's a really, really good movie. Yeah, yeah my, That stuff kind of still applied in 2001 trivia, as, as you know. There, Wait, it was fixed? Well, no, but there was uh, impropriety laws or propriety laws, however it works. I walked into Kenny Main once, and it was just like sirens were going off. Like, I could not talk to him in any way, pass on a question to him. Our desks had paper shredders. Every night, your desk had to look like this when you left. It's kind of cool. I kind of dug that. How would you do on Sports Jeopardy? There was a time in my life that nobody would be beating me. I, I think that, that my mid-20s, you know, this is, this is what amounts to somebody who never went on a date in high school, I think. <laughs> um, um, again, you know, Janet Jackson's boob was my first. Um, but Paul, Paulie would like a piece you, of you. You want a piece of me? I want a couple. Okay. I want, I, I want, do uh, we do this now? Do we do this later? Can we do this, can we do this after hours? Maybe we could do it out there. <laughs> I'll, I'll, next time we do Sports Jeopardy, maybe uh, Tony. Are you, uh, are you a good in the bar having some beers? Trivia guy, because I'm the a little better. The beers is a tough one for me, because as you can see, I'm, I'm like a half a human to begin with. Yeah, you what know? is up I'm, with you? This is what I was talking about with this. So this is a beautiful creation here that, that Dan drinks. That has apple, banana, kale. I don't know what acorn. A acorn? You have acorn in here? What is ACM? I have no idea. Okay. You, maybe he's drinking acorns. He might be part squirrel. <laughs> and, and spinach. So for me, for a while, I was drinking these on a daily basis. Now, the amount of spinach you need, okay, if you, if you order spinach, Fritzy, you're getting spinach with your meal every night at the steakhouse, right? Yeah. So on your plate, there's this much spinach. The amount of spinach you need to fill out a, a juice is like this much spinach. That's a whole lot if you're listening on radio. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm a TV a guy. So show, a TV show. guy. Yeah, so um, my point is they show you Popeye's muscles. They don't show you his kidney stones. I had kidney stones because I would drink uh, one or two of these a day um, from my healthy lifestyle. And after that, and combined in a few food poisonings from maybe a delectable dish of sushi from the Pittsburgh airport. Now, what happened with that? You, you threw up at the... I maintain any sushi you've ever eaten in your life, unless you're in Tokyo, okay, is coming from a plane somewhere. It's just, it's being flown in. You're not fishing at a Lake Michigan if you live in wherever the middle of the country and wherever Lake You've Michigan is. You've never just caught a fish and then had and the fish sushi right grade there. fish and made sushi and just sliced it up. <laughs> no, I have not done that. What, what am I, an, an adventurer? Uh, Lewis and Clark like, here? Like East River? You never like fish <laughs> no, in the East River? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Francesca saw them pull a fish out of the Hudson uh, just last week. It was like this big. I was like, oh, my goodness, they're out there. Uh, so I'm in Pittsburgh. I'm flying out to go to go to do a bike race in California, which I don't do either. I think my bike shorts at the time, I know this, were women's bike shorts. Because you go, you buy bike shorts for the first time. You don't know where the padding's supposed to be. You know they're supposed to be padding, but you don't know there's where it's supposed to be. So I bought these. And then I, I, I looked in the back, and the tag was pink. But I said, okay, this is stylistically, you know. I mean, there's a pink jersey in the Tour de France. So, I mean, and then, and then, and then the size said something like six. And I was like, oh, okay, a size six. Is this a European fit or something like that? <laughs> I wore size six for women for, for, for my bike shorts. So I, 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 I was equipped with women's bike shorts. And I was flying out to L.A. for this race from maybe it was San Diego to some, uh, you know, something below the border, and I was like, I gotta eat healthy going into this, and it's, you're at an airport, What's, what are you gonna get? And I saw the sushi stand, I'm like, I'll get some sushi, you know, it's nice clean living, let's do that. So I had sushi at the Pittsburgh airport, I think it was the Rust Belt Roll, 
<laughs> which which in, initially <laughs> some, some suspicion for some people, but not this guy. And it, it, it was it was like a circle of hell, man. That was bad. That was a bad one. Not the worst. I, th I think muscles from Brussels was the worst. You had muscles in Brussels. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which makes sense. It rhymes. <laughs> And, and they're that, known for their muscles They're a over seafaring there. people. Yeah, they're, they're, right. they're known for Jean-Claude Van Damme. I, I was expecting him to deliver them, actually, at the table. Um, that, that was the worst one. I, I was in a... We were staying, and this is me and my wife, who was, I think, my wife at the time. We were staying in some sort of bed and breakfast hotel mansion. We were the only people there. It was, you know, six... It was an old, this is an old uh, European city, and, it's, and it's, this is what you want out of life, Right. And they, I think they had heated floors in the bathroom, which you're like, well, this is pretty cool. When you take a shower, you get your toesies warm when you get out of the shower. Now I see, now I see the benefits of a heated floor in a bathroom. When you are vomiting, projectily, <laughs> your, your spleen is coming out of your body, and you're just, there's nothing in the world more comfortable than underneath the toilet seat when you're in that moment. It's, it's really early in the morning for people. Are we sure we want to hear this? <laughs> uh, they just did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, we're going to take a break. Tony Reale is uh, in the building. I just I need you to have a little bit more energy, though, when we come back, okay? <laughs> if you're capable of doing that. We wanted to play oh, Around the Horn. Oh, good. Oh, let's do this. But I want you, we mm -hmm. already have the, the topics, but I want you to decide how many points the oh, Danettes get. Let's go. Let's okay? go Around the Horn. I, and also, I want to know, when there was real friction on Around the Horn, Yeah. was there any topic that created friction uh, any any time you've ever come close to a fight or anybody be angry at one another, like you wanna, want me to think about this, or you want yeah, me to give you an answer right now? I, it's called a tease. Oh yeah, that's right. That's what you do. Okay. <laughs> you tease around the horn stuff, right? I, I you know what? We 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 kind of got rid of that. Oh, you did. Yeah, we kinda, I, maybe I teased at the top of the show, but but what I, what I determined was I'm gonna just jam as much. I'm going to break like this. See you later. We'll be back. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then <laughs> see you later. We'll be back. The Dan Patrick Show. <laughs> What is the poll question today, McLovin, for uh, Tony Reale, the host of Around the Horn? Uh, we haven't decided on one. The leader in the clubhouse, is tonight a must-win situation for Cleveland Cavaliers? Or are you allowed to say that as a sports fan, or is it too stupid of a question? Is Mu tonight a must-win Must situation? Must-win now is a, a mute-worthy infraction. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What else it's, will get you muted? Um, the word elite. Um, goalie standing on his head at this point, <laughs> has, uh, especially with a lot of the panels I throw out there, not a lot of coverage of hockey uh, from my panel or yeah. maybe in, in the greater uh, sphere that we're on. Um, so, so that happened yesterday to Kate Fagan. And some there was some static coming back from that, not from Kate. Kate would never give me static, but from some people, how could you possibly mute her for a brilliant... Well, no, I've heard that 197 times. So, so that's out there right now. Narrative... Um, is something that I've had to mute. Uh, the optics. The optics, <laughs> the optics of saying narrative is very bad for yes, you right Paulie. now. It's to problematic for Tony, me. Tony, how about if someone thing. finishes with at the end of the day or to a man? Yeah, I, I don't mind at the end of the day or having said that because that harkens me to a place I can go, which is curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> having said that to me, okay, now I can get into a curb your enthusiasm riff. And basically I'm doing the entire show only to riff into Goodfellas or Seinfeld or, or some of the other things that I like, yeah. Do you play favorites? Um, I play favorites not in the, the people they are. I play favorites in the style and delivery and how they're doing it. I mean, I, I, I guess you're trying to ask me how does one score yeah. around the horn? It's okay. subjective. It is something I have accrued through many years, a fine set of skills, some might say. Um, I judge them on point of view, I think, most of all. I want somebody who's bringing something that's their own. I want style and information and delivery. And, of course, I want accuracy. I'll mute you for anything inaccurate that especially I catch in real time. I live for those moments where I, I, I see them walking themselves into something. And I, and I also mute to, to penalize and direct traffic because we've got four voices. And as you know from watching on TV, they're in four different locations, which is a cool thing that we do, but also can get a little hairy sometimes when there's a slight delay coming out of, out of L.A., now, I think the delay is coming out of L.A. It may be coming out of J.A. Adonde. He may be <laughs> J.A. Adon delay. I has, mean. <laughs> has it ever gotten really tense, like seriously, where somebody criticizes there somebody? Was a time, there was a time when, and this tells you how long ago it was, where I would get off the set and there would be a blinking light on an answering machine on my desk phone. So that would be a blinking light. And I would look at it. I would see the area code. 
and it would be from Chicago. And Jay Mariani. <laughs> well, I don't know. It would be from Chicago, <laughs> one of our many, many. Um, and it would say, message, three minutes and seven seconds. And oh, I was like, oh. what did I get myself into? Um, I want every panelist to have some competitive vigor. I want them to attack with deft aplomb. I want, I think when I took over the show, you asked me if I was nervous. I was especially nervous because I was young and because I had one suit and two ties. Um, but I was also nervous because, you know, the show was made for Max Kellerman, the, the, the first host. And Max and I are similar in a lot of ways, um, but he also wants to kind of lead with his chin a little bit. You know, he doesn't mind putting it out there. I think the, the show started with these four things I know are true. That's not something I'm going to say. Never felt comfortable coming out of my mouth. I think I said it for the first 50 episodes and kind of begged off of that. And we kind of be, we made it about the sports writers. You're looking at four of America's most socially, you know, uh, awkward sports writers. Um, and now we've made it just about, you know, the tease. But I, I kind of, what got us away from the blinking light phone call, you know, and, and anything else that kind of came out of that. And there's never really been a bad moment to answer your question. Um, because I'm, I'm somebody who will force communication. I'm somebody who will force feelings among people. I, I'm, I'm comfortable with my feelings. If you're uncomfortable with my feelings, I'm comfortable <laughs> with that, you know? Um, I, I flew out and I met with everybody, which is how the first time I've been in, in the Dan Patrick airspace, the only time in my life, and Paul was there too, was after a roast for Dan Patrick. And I was with Jay Mariotti at the time. This was in Chicago, the first time I've ever been to Chicago. When I landed, I thought I woke up. I thought I fell asleep in the plane. I woke up and I looked outside. I thought I landed in L.A. I did not realize Lake Michigan was like a big a, a body lake. of water. Yeah, a lake. A lake. Well, yeah. a lake to me is like I'm going to skip some stones on the lake and maybe hit the other side of the lake, right? Like I could throw a baseball over Lake Michigan. Sure. Like, like education wasn't too big in your household growing well, up. I think apparently. I was educated in other things. I mean, like I, maps I, and maps. Like oh that. yeah, yeah, map, maps. I'm good in world geography, I'd like to say. You know, the Atlantic is big, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, have you ever been told you look like David Blaine? David Blaine a little bit, Andy Pettit a lot. Yeah, Andy I Pettit. I like the Andy Pettit. If you put up the baseball glove. Yes, and, and, and over, over the eyes. Oh, I lo I mean, I loved Andy Pettit. Um, and then there's also a little bit of uh, Francesca Schiavone, who's a, who's a, an Italian tennis player. Um, and, and I believe her family is from the same part of Italy that my family is. So I got that going for me. And then I think um, my Twitter pinned tweet at this moment, which was a sentence never said in history until I just said it right now, is Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Marlon Wayans. Which, which proves to you I can go I can go everywhere if you need me to. I can really get you a man who can do you both. Look at it. Look at it right now. Wait, you look like Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Well, at a certain time in my life, it was my first communion, my first holy communion, Dan. And I, at the time, had the glasses that... Oh, my God. There we go, oh, see, gentlemen. See, yeah. he's looking at it. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Now, go back now. Give me Marlon Wayans, too. Give me Marlon Wayans. That's so funny. So... Get you a man that can do you both. And that's all, that's, that's my code, man. That's how I live my life. All right, let me, uh, let me do an around the horn. Oh, I will okay. give you the topic. <laughs> all right. And then the Danettes will give you their answer. And I will score. Now, how long are they allowed to talk? Well, um, typically we say about 15 to 20. I'm going to give you guys 10 seconds because I believe we're dealing with a higher caliber of competitive banterer. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Best looking quarterback in New England. <laughs> That's a good question. That might be buy or sell one and around the horn today. Okay. Uh, Paulie? All right, let's go around the horn. Paulie. Okay. I'm ready to go. Present tense question. You notice the question isn't in the past. It's in present tense. Mm, yes. And we're not talking about ability, legacy, history. Just looks. It's Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm -hmm. Done. Because mm -hmm. you had to qualify it with an enormous. <laughs> the preamble was longer than our own uh, government's based on. Go ahead. Oh, we got McLovin. Let's hit it. Come on. Okay. Jimmy G has that whole sexy pirate thing going on. I get it. But Tom Brady's a classic. I think we just got bored of how good looking he was. But I've been flipping through the Met Ball pictures. He's an all-timer. The eyes as blue as ever. Tom Brady. Mm, ding, ding, ding. All right. Let's go, Fritzy. Jimmy Garoppolo, Tom Brady, overrated. We get all caught up that he's got the Giselle supermodel lifestyle and wife. And overrated, all the Super Bowls. over cliche. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, wow. oh, 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 man. Man. All right, come Damn. on. Save the Listen, second. Seaton. Winning looks good, doesn't it? If there's only one man in New England I want to see standing shirtless under a waterfall, and it's Tom Brady. <laughs> you, you forgot one thing. Play to your host. Garoppolo. Italian oh. heat. Ah. Italian heat. See, if you would have known where his ancestry was from, right. then you play. It does not, does you, that you, not convey you, in a normal way? Should I, should I play that up a little bit more? The coolest <laughs> player in the NBA. Okay. I, 
Let's uh, go around the horn. Scene, let's go back the other way. Come on. Oh, John Wall. Absolutely cool, dude. He's all tatted out. Dougie, enough said. All tatted out? We're giving credit for all tatted out? That's everybody in the league. Go ahead. Wow. Fritzy. Draymond Green, <laughs> always smiling. He's got a little bit of an edge to him. Isn't afraid to break somebody's shoulder. So if it's he has cool to, to, to need people in the gonads? <laughs> go ahead. McLovin. I'm going to go with JaVale McGee. Can anyone else rock a headband like JaVale McGee? Oh, and, and Paul is now, uh, now I've, I've seen this face before. Somebody said exactly what you're about to say on Around the Horn. How's that possible? Look completely. All right, Paul. Okay, let's see you vamp. JaVale. I'm going to go with JaVale McGee. Here's why. Because I don't know what's going to happen when he steps on the court. He's going to dunk on your basket, on our basket, on their basket. <laughs> Something great's going to happen. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I'll Plus, give you points for that. you got to love his McGee. mom, Pam McGee. Yes, yeah, Pam McGee gets credit, too. One other I throw out there just to wrap up here because we were talking about the best duos in NBA history this week with uh, with Duran and Curry. Uh, Deion Waiters and anyone on a 10-game contract. Best duo in NBA history. All right. Best hair in sports media history. I'm not allowed to be in this. Oh, no, I can't. Uh, I have to exclude myself here. So we'll go around the horn, Paulie. Mel Kuyper Jr. It's a legend from day ding, one of the draft ding, to ding, today at the draft. Ding, 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 it's, ding, a, ding, it's like the ding, Mount Rushmore ding, of ding, hair. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, man. <laughs> ding, ding. McLovin? <laughs> I'm going to go with Michelle Beadle. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nice ding, Michelle, ding, if you're watching, I love hi. Michelle. I love Michelle, and honestly, I, I feel like if she was on Around the Horn, everyone, uh, a show of Michelle Beadle would be like a run-and-hide situation for every other panelist that day. So I'll give you a ding-ding. Fritzy. I am not ashamed to admit a man crush on Jim Palmer back in the day in ABC. Yeah. Great hair, oh. underwear. Oh, there was hair. There wasn't just hair on the head, right? I mean, I mean we've seen, we've seen the yeah, yeah. chest. Sexy I mean, man. That, that, was, chest that, was, that was burlap on the... Uh, okay, let's go. Great hair, yeah, underwear. Because I didn't say... Just head on, you know, hair right. on head. No, no, hair right. in general. That's right. Yeah. That's absolutely uh, right. Seton O'Connor. I think probably the most underappreciated head of hair in sports media history. Seton Hall guy won the general, Robert Aloysius Lee. Guys had the exact Bob Lee. Absolutely. Bob Lee. Bob Lee. The guy's got a solid head of hair and nobody talks that about it. That is a hair part you could set your watch to. Hasn't but, moved in 40 years. But he does, it, he straps that on in the morning. I mean, that's just a piece that he puts oh. on. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I've seen him put it on. It looks damn good. I was going to go John Clayton with the ponytail. Mm. Oh, that's the winner. That's the winner. Johnny, Absolutely. Johnny that was good a great time. sweet he had going out. John, going out that Johnny, I'm the Johnny ponytail. good time. Yeah. Uh, he, he hosts Around the Horn. By the way, it's a sports debate and discussion <laughs> show. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the, that's <laughs> PR, me PR yes, gave us that. I remember now. Uh, Friday, Monday through Friday at five Eastern. You're always welcome back here. Well, you thank are. you very much. I mean, I, it's, no I just we we had to. It's not a full invite, but you're always welcome back. Okay, all right. We'd love well, to have you back. This is this already looks like my my bedroom. You've got posters of Goodfellas and Scarface up there. You notice that there's a typo in the Scarface poster. Time to find out what we messed up stat for. They have a typo in the Scarface poster. Why do you love Goodfellas so much? Why? Is that even a question? Why? It's, it's cinematically perfect. What are you talking about? Uh, it's okay. I didn't think it was great. That's it. Reality is gone. It's, I'm not he's, just gone. He's, yeah, he's gone. You know what? I'm taking, he's, I'm taking, he's the, taking the, the... Even with spinach. I'll I, get you're taking my... You what are you doing? Good Tony, move. That is, that is the correct move. Tony, it, <laughs> reality's going around the corner here and leaving. All right. We're back after this. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.